Hello to our guy friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. And once again, it's time for another Orc Mode workout. Today was max effort deadlift day. You guys have already seen the PR. Reach down there and give me a like. If you guys scroll through this, click like. Come on, you know you want to hit like. Help a brother out. Click like on my other videos for the day too. Keep those likes higher than the dislikes. You saw that first warm up there. That one didn't go in the original clip that I put up earlier. Ramping up. Um, I'm happy with this today. Now, some people called it already. Yeah, it's grip. I haven't touched my axle bar since my deload. And I need to do a little more grip specialization. I felt like I was strong enough to make another attempt, honestly. But what is it that we always say? I hate it when get guys say stuff like, well, I could have got it if I just saw this or my grip wasn't a limiting factor. No, that means you can't do it. Okay? If you come in and say, well... I can pull 600 raw, but 700 with straps. So it's like, so you pull 600. <laughs> That's how it works. You pull 600, bro. Just live with it. Own it. It's fine. So, as I ramped up, uh, yeah, I realized I was going to get a PR today. I knew it as soon as I started ramping. Like, I'm like, I'm going to get better than my last raw. Uh, people who didn't watch, I pulled 615 raw earlier this year so now we got 625 off a one inch deficit I am usually maybe 10 pounds weaker off of a one inch deficit maybe they're pretty close really they're very very close so either way it's a PR because if I can pull it from a deficit I know I can pull it from the floor so PR absolutely all the way in order to go up my grip has to get stronger again. And so what I'm going to do, I'm, I pull again in three weeks. I hit a max deadlift again in three weeks, right? We run them in three week waves. So I need to work on my grip. I'm going to start doing the axle bar rows. So I started doing the inverted rows again. Uh, I can do them three days a week at least. I'll do them on my two upper body days and I'll do them again on max effort day. I may not have the work capacity to handle it on dynamic days because I have to do all this posterior chain work and that's okay. We'll, we'll get what we can in. Work on grip more. Get that grip dialed back in. Hammer my grip harder. Make sure my grip is good. And keep hammering it. And I don't know that I would have missed it. I felt like I would have missed it if I put, made another ramp up. I felt like my grip was just limiting today. Now, I did quite a bit of grip work on Sunday. Coming back, realizing I was going to have to deadlift and I wanted my grip stronger. I'm like, hmm, I've been used, doing grip training, but not as much as I should have. That's okay, we correct that. Now my grip is my limiting factor on my deadlift again. So it was a little fatigued. My thumbs and stuff hurt today. But we still got a PR, so we know what we need to fix. The other muscles are good. In fact, I'm just PRing still. All my posterior chain stuff, look at all this. I added more chains again to these today. Four by six. And I'm not even playing around. That's not less like 10 pounds of chains here, guys. So we're running 315 on this, and we've been adding chains every time. All right, I added another 7 pounds of chains each side this time. Versus last time, where we just keep adding chains, adding chains, adding chains. All right? And this is how we take a lift like this, and we help keep from straining our back. People say, oh my god, you can't do this this heavy all the time. Yeah, you can. I use slings to do it sling supported so we come to that dead stop and I'll use accommodating resistance and I'll work with 315 till I put a ton of chains on here and I'll max on it every three weeks I can rotate chain weights and things to keep it very to avoid overuse injuries and to avoid excessively loading the weakest point while we build all the hypertrophy up right because what do we really care about the most the top half for my squat now the deadlift is affected by the whole thing but this volume accumulates, and keeping in mind, I'm doing other posterior chain stuff. I'm doing tons of reverse hypers and everything. So this is how I do it. This is what I'm going to do. This is the game plan, and it's working. Okay, we can load lifts like this with a lot of volume and a lot of weight if we're careful in the approach, which I'm doing. And it may not be necessary. I mean, realistically, we could do just different bars and stuff. It's fine. But I have the tools to get away with doing it this way. 
because I want this to carry over to my squat. The deadlift's coming along. I need to keep that squat moving. And I need that good morning strength on the top half to really hammer that squat home. Okay, we need that. Because the bottom of my squat is, is, is handled already. Like I already know what's going on. The box squats, all the sled pulls, all that, that's going to make sure that I'm, I drive through those sticking points. I need to make sure that once I pop through those sticking points, I can keep driving through. Because that has also been a weak link for me sometimes on squatting. It's that upper back every now and then. This is how we fix it. Now we could argue about the safety bar. It's fine. This is a better solution than using the safety bar. Just attack it directly with the good mornings. I need to pussyfoot around about it, guys. Then we did the rows. I used different grips, and that's what I'm going to have to do because I'm going to start doing the axle bar again on these. I'll do them three days a week. Hit the axle bar. Keep getting that upper back work. Um, my lats are fine. I don't care if my grip becomes a limiting factor a little bit. My lats are jacked. I need the extra rear delt work. I've been doing all this extra rear delt work and everything else. Well, this works all that too. So let's just kill two birds with one stone. Let's hit all that stuff while doing grip. Because my other option here was to start doing axle bar deadlifts. And I might need to do those too. Okay, we may have to start working axle bar double overhand deadlifts in on these days also. And if I have to do that, I have to do that. Do whatever it takes. I'm not going to do it today because I deadlifted. But maybe on a squat day, maybe on a good morning day, we can work some of those in also keep hammering that grip but these uh, some of them my, my reps got lower like I did 5 by 12 actually only got 10 yesterday with the normal bar the grip is a little more limiting I still felt my upper back work but I'm not worried about it my upper back is jacked it's going to keep getting more jacked so what we do the grip training the grip will catch up this way because if my grip gets stronger, my deadlift's going to go up. Because I'm still continuing to PR. Like, look at the good mornings going up. All the lifts that build my deadlift, I'm improving at. Still. And I have a game plan for progressing on them. So I need to keep this grip on point. Like, I really need to add another 50 pounds to my grip strength. That's the only thing preventing me from blasting past 650. 660, 670. All right, I'm going to have the, the strength to do that through my back and hamstrings and everything pretty fast at this point. And anyone who wants to make the silly jokes, this, this should be the dead giveaway. When people say the clowning, because every real lifter knows my plates are real. They know what plates I'm using. Okay. You just watched what setting I'm on on the glute ham race. Okay. I weigh over 200 pounds. I hope no one thinks that I'm 150 pounds. Like, I'm sorry, people who want to say I'm fat and everything. Well, then I can't be at a light body weight just a little bit over 220 right I'm on a hard setting on the glute ham race what band did I use I've got a black rogue band looped down and put around my neck look how much stretch I'm putting on that band anyone who's ever done a glute ham race particularly on a harder setting knows what's going on here so anyone who wants to make some BS that, well, you know, I think whatever is a fake way. Compare my supplemental lifts to stuff that you guys can measure. Assuming I didn't have any visible plates at all and you had no idea what was on that bar. You're watching me do heel elevated inverted rows where I'm pretty much off the floor. So I can touch the floor on those. Off of an 18 inch elevation with the axle bar with a wide grip. Okay. You can approximate my upper back strength with that. If you know anything about lifting, you can approximate that. These glued ham raises, you can look at my posterior chain strength. My hamstrings and everything else that you are seeing displayed right here, looking at that, that band thickness and what sort of band that is, versus the setting and the angles I'm at on this, is indicative of a 600 plus pound puller. Okay, so if you watched these lifts and you had no clue what I deadlift, you should be able to have a good idea. A reasonable person would look at that and go, yeah, that guy can pull at least six, 600. Just based upon the supplemental work. This stuff matters. You can tell how strong someone is from their supplemental lifts. You can tell. You know. 
if you know what you're looking at. Then we finished up with the reverse hypers. I bumped the weight a hair. I went up 10 pounds. I want to keep on track with what I think my squat maxes are approaching right now because I haven't tested a true max, but I have my other work and I have a real good idea of where I think my squat is. So we'll see what we get coming up on the, uh, the next few weeks on randoms for the squats, but I think we're going to see some pretty good numbers based upon that last heavy chain squat which wasn't an all-out max I left a little bit. Uh, I think we're going to see some pretty big raw numbers. I, I feel like the next time I put straight weight on a box squat without any chains, it's going to be at least 560. Okay, And I'm basing that on the chain weight. Which means my back squat, you know, you guys can, can do your own math from there. Approximate where that's coming up to. We're going to hit the numbers. Like my, my goals for the year, they are going to get knocked down. The bench is going to be the hardest. It's going to require the most work because it's my worst lift. So for those who, who don't remember, uh, the goal is a 600 raw squat, no wraps, 375 bench, 650 deadlift. That's my goals for the year. Uh, those are going to be reachable. I think they're very, very reachable at this point. Again, the bench is going to be the most work. And I feel like the squat and the deadlift are the closest in terms of percentages. But that bench is going to end up being a closed grip. That's going to be a closed grip. It's just not going to be a wide. I'm just going to be able to do close easier and progress on it easier. But great workout, happy with everything, uh, addressing weak points, getting stronger on the supplemental work, good PR. I feel good. I'm not sore. I'm not fatigued. So a lot of people are like, man, I bet you're tired. I feel, no, actually I'm not. I actually feel quite good. feel pretty good. This workout was solid, but it didn't destroy me. And that's the difference. It didn't crush me. And then afterwards, for people who are curious what else I might do today, um, probably some band pull aparts, maybe some abs, maybe some grip work. And then tomorrow is active recovery, which is restoration and GBP. But great workout, happy with everything today. So I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.